In this coastal town in India, workers split bamboo stalks with a machete. They cut and shape them to make fences, homes, and baskets. Alauddin was born and raised in the northeastern state of Assam, but after the government implemented a citizenship list, he found himself fighting to prove his identity as an Indian national. Alauddin is one of the lucky ones. His family is on the registry. But there are still 1.9 million people living in Assam whose citizenship remains in limbo. In recent months, protests have erupted across India due to two controversial laws that critics say target Muslim immigrants and even those born here. At odds are the country's deeply religious roots and its secular constitution. Alauddin travels from his small island to the town of Dubri, making on average 250 rupees or $3.50 a day to provide for his mother, wife and four children. But when the National Register of Citizens or NRC was enforced, things changed. NRC सुनते हुए तो हम लोग को तो हैरान हो गया कागज है लेकिन उसका काम धंधा छोड़कर कागज को पीछे हमको भागने लगा In a country like India not everyone has their documents in order says Milan Vishnav an expert on South Asian politics India is a very poor country even today only about 70% of births happen with an official birth certificate. So mo a lot of people cannot prove their citizenship status. They're worried that this essentially is going to disenfranchise a bunch of genuine citizens who simply are either too poor or come from the wrong community to be able to justify their existence. The Indian government has discussed the possibility of rolling out NRC in the entire country by 2021. On top of that, Parliament passed the Citizenship Amendment Act, or CAA, which gives minorities originally from neighboring countries a faster path to citizenship, but it excludes Muslims. If India were to carry out a nationwide citizens register and there are people who are deemed to be illegal migrants, illegal residents, not genuine citizens, if you are a Muslim, you will essentially will be deemed perhaps a stateless person and your citizenship, your voting rights would be taken away. People who are not considered citizens fear being sent to detention centers, even though Prime Minister Narendra Modi has denied the camps exist. Across the country, Indians of all faiths have been protesting for months. They claim these laws go against the constitution by deciding citizenship on the basis of religion. This bill is unconstitutional, it is communal. But in some areas, the demonstrations turned violent. 27 people have been killed since the government passed the Citizenship Act in December. During the unrest, the government shut off internet and phone networks in large areas of the country. Critics say the NRC and CAA laws are just the latest in a series of moves by Modi that are driving India toward being a Hindu nationalist country. This is an ideology which has been present uh, going back to the 19th century. This is not a new phenomenon. At the time of India's founding in the 1940s, there was a debate about should India be an avowedly, explicitly Hindu country? The Hindus had with great reluctance accepted partition. Prime Minister Nehru called upon leaders representing many shades of political thought and various religious groups to help build a modern democratic state out of age-old India. Even though India chose a secular path, today Hindus make up the majority at roughly 80% of the population, while Muslims account for 15%. And now many fear that the minority voice is being muffled by Modi's laws. Last month, India's Supreme Court refused to put a hold on the CAA. 
Instead, it will hear arguments from the government in favor of the law. Meanwhile, several Indian states have said they will not cooperate. In the weeks and months to come, Muslims fear that life in their homeland may get increasingly harder if they can't prove Hindustan is home. Assam has been at the center of India's recent identity crisis, but what's next for the northeastern region? We're joined now by Sanjeev Barua, a professor of political studies at Bard College and an expert on the history and politics of northeastern India. So Sanjeev, can you tell us a little bit about Assam and why it's significant geopolitically? In terms of contemporary geopolitics, the fact that that area borders China's Tibet on the one side, Myanmar on the other side, Bangladesh, Nepal. All of that makes that a fairly important region from the Indian strategic perspective. So do Muslims make up a crucial part of Assam and are they represented as such in the state? Yes, Muslims do indeed uh, constitute a significant part, as much as more than 30%, which means that of all Indian states, Assam's Muslim population is next only to Kashmir's. Now, is Narendra Modi considered responsible for India's recent move towards Hindu nationalism, or has that been sort of brewing for a while? Since the beginnings of nationalism in South Asia, one can say there has always been two different ways of constructing the Indian nation. That, that everybody who lives in the territory of India are Indians versus a more Hindu nationalist one, so that has an old history. It just wasn't that dominant, right? Its dominance has been only since the 1990s, and in the most recent election in 2014, it has acquired such dominance. So what for a long time was almost a fringe movement has, become, has occupied the center of Indian politics suddenly. Now, what should we expect from President Trump's upcoming visit to India? Well, as you know, Trump likes Modi, Modi likes Trump, uh, so that, uh, so I'm, I'm afraid I, I don't expect anything substantive to happen, uh, because clearly I don't think that Trump is the kind of politician who will deal with any of these tensions, contradictions. So what people tend to underestimate, that the American rhetoric, anti-Muslim rhetoric, or say uh, Trump banning Muslims from, from, from the United States or not giving them visas, has a global effect, if you like, because these are, these are really minority tendencies, political tendencies, who feel much more empowered because of Trump. So in terms of the issues we are talking about, I don't see anything positive com coming out of the Trump visit, I'm afraid. We'll see you next time on another episode of Business Insider Today.